Okay, I see that most of our customers are present here, so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to our webinar. Uh, today, our webinar is products and solutions for the Internet of Vehicles. First of all, uh, I would introduce today's speakers. As you can see, we have two speakers. Um, we have Zeming Wang, product manager, who is now based in the US, and I am Bessie Wu, marketing communications manager of Inhand Networks. Okay, a brief overview of our contents for today. First of all, we will have a brief introduction of our company, Inhand Networks, and next we will have introduction of our products, VT310, VG710, and their applications respectively, after that, we will have a selection guide and roadmap for our future products. At the last of the webinar today, we will have a Q&A session. So next, I will give my floor to my I will give the floor to my colleague, Zuming. Thank you. Hey, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. This is Zuming. So thank you for your time to join this meeting. Um, I will introduce the company briefly. So. Uh, as some of you may know in hand, uh, we started business at 2001. And on that time, we uh, set up the company to support our customer for M2M, -M, machine to machine uh, business. And then we uh, grew up uh, from 2001 uh, till now. And the last year, uh, 2019, uh, we have our new um, factory in China. So we own our new uh, facility in uh, Jiaxin, close to Shanghai. And uh, uh, this year, beginning of this year, we are st <clears throat> listed on the uh, star market in China. So now we are growing very well. Uh, and also, um, as you may know, so we worked for the industrial market for a while. So now we have a new product for vehicle. So uh, your next switch, please. Um, to support our customers, so we have a uh, multiple facility in, uh, in the worldwide. For our headquarters is in China. Uh, so we have two R&D center. Um, one is in Beijing, another one is in Chengdu, uh, Southwest city in China. And also we have multiple branches in China. Uh, of course, our, our manufacturing team is in China. We set up two uh, subsidiary. One is uh, uh, Germany, another one is in US. Uh, beside that, we have multiple um, partners uh, Chinos uh, cover the worldwide business. Uh, we have more than 300 employees uh, worldwide. Um, more than 100 of them is an R&D team. So we always say in hand that we are the we are the company based on the uh, technology uh, because we developed all this product by ourselves. Uh, last year, our total sales is more than 40 minutes. Uh, we delivered more than 390,000 IoT devices. Uh, for worldwide customer. Um, about 40, uh, 30 to 40 percent of this device they were, uh, delivered to um, out of China. And next one, please. Uh, or uh, to have uh, the best quality control, we uh, certified our factory uh, with the ISO 9001. So, and all of our product, I mean, hardware is with three years warranty. Uh, to be honest, with this kind of warranty, most of the customers, they don't need it because they, they have a good feeling about our, our quality. Um, so we always put five, three years warranty here. And if some customers, they want to have longer uh, warranty, they can come back to our sales to negotiate about like five years. <clears throat> and also in hand, we, uh, we know the technical support is very important. So now we are set up the two technical support uh, center. One is in China, one is in US. So we can coverage most of our customer uh, for 16 hours per day, uh, five days per week. Uh, because we are the Chinese company, we are pre uh, pretty flexible. If you do need uh, some uh, urgent technical support, so you can uh, talk with ourselves to about like uh, support at the weekend, like Saturday or Sunday, uh, we can provide remote support as well. So here uh, I just uh, give you an uh, overview of uh, in hand product. Um, so for the, the bottom one, we provide the sensors 
to some uh, vertical market. And uh, besides uh, about that, we have uh, the most important hardware we call it the network layer. Uh, from left to right, we provide the uh, cellular router uh, and also the switch, cellular modem and the gateway. The last one on the right side is a vehicle gateway and the tracker, which is the, uh, the one we are going to talk about today. Uh, about that, we provide uh, our pass service. We call it the Enhanced Networks um, Cloud Platform or some, we named it Device Manager. So with this one, you can manage all the Enhanced uh, hardwares. Uh, some of our customers, they request the vertical solutions. So we developed the uh, IWS, which is for the power line. And also we developed the uh, vending machine uh, control system, we call it VMS. And also now we uh, have the uh, Chinese version uh, smart uh, vehicle uh, system. Um, so now we already, we already launched this one in China, but not for US, not for Euro market yet. Yeah, next one, please. So today uh, I'm going to introduce the hardware and uh, let's the, uh, basically introduce the applications. Um, the, on the right side is a, a VG710, uh, the official name is the in-vehicle uh, gateway 710. Um, this one is a, not brand new. Uh, on the right side is a VG310, we call it in-vehicle uh, tracker 310. Uh, this is a brand new device, this first time we launched for the uh, customer. Uh, you can look at this out, uh, outlook of these two de uh, devices. On the left one, Wiki310 is a looks like a smaller one, uh, probably bigger, a little bit bigger than two business car. Uh, this one is designed for the uh, light duty trucks and also the heavy trucks. Um, also, some of customers use this one for uh, commercial vehicles. Uh, more than that, we can use this one to track the asset. Uh, on the vehicle uh, G710, um, we use this one as a, how to say, gateway for um, public transmit and also uh, provide, uh, provide the internet for the passenger who is in the vehicle. So, um, and also we provide this one as a solution to the uh, service vehicle, like the construction vehicle or the um, emergency vehicle, uh, like a first responders, uh, fire engine, uh, kind of applications. So uh, let's focus on the uh, 310 first. Uh, the outlook looks like is a, a rock die design. You see is a waterproof. Uh, we know the most application for this one need the uh, IP67. So we put the um, plastic, uh, uh, plastic um, enclosure with this one. And also you see the uh, soccer, the connector is a waterproof as well. Now we already have the uh, CE and the FCC certification on this one. Uh, PDCIB is, uh, is in the process. Uh, we are almost done the PDCIB. And, and also this one is uh, certified with eMark. Uh, this device is in, not yet, sorry. Uh, this one uh, is embedded with the uh, GNSS with the um, <clears throat> with a kind of sensor. You can use this one to, how to say, um, integrate with your application to get a more accurate uh, location info. Uh, it also supports CAN bus and uh, another uh, IOs, uh, including one Y RS232. Uh, this device, we have a CAD4, CAD1, and also CAD M1 models. So no matter what kind of network you need, then you can select the correct one. Uh, this one in, uh, integrated with the, um, how to say, the third party software, like a cloud-based software, uh, some of customers uh, already use this one to integrate with the Azure IoT Hub. And also we already integrated with a, a wireland portal, which is a, a fleet managing software. Um, so because we know this one uh, is going to use with uh, only vehicle and some of, uh, and uh, for most application, uh, we have to have the battery. So we integrated the uh, battery with this unit. Uh, it will be either a rechargeable battery inside. Uh, once the vehicle is on, is turned on, then this one will work in the full function. Uh, once the vehicle is turned off, we will uh, work in the standby mode, which means the device will, uh, in the standby mode, it means this device will uh, 
power off and then power on for a certain period. Probably um, you can configure it, let's say um, power on one minute and then send some data to the cloud and then go to sleep for one hour. So to save the energy. Um, this one, uh, we have, a, we know the, for the competitive device, they have a lot of interface, but we think we have more than that. So you see, we have a two cam bus uh, with this small one. And also we support the four digital out, uh, input, three uh, digital output, and also one uh, analog input. Plus that we have one wire interface. Um, for the configuration part, we, this device supports the Bluetooth 4. So it means you can use your cell phone or your computer to configure this one through the Bluetooth. For the uh, cell phone um, <clears throat> application to configure it, we are still uh, developing on it. We will release that application soon. Uh, also this, this device, uh, because it is a smaller one and also we have some uh, we have so many interface, the customer, they may want to customize this kind of uh, application. Uh, so you can contact our sales to see what kind of uh, device you want to connect. We may, we may be able to have some customer features for you. Um, this one is integrated the um, 31 channels GNSS uh, <coughs> chip site. Uh, and also the um, antenna is in building. So you can have this device to uh, on the vehicle inside, inside to the vehicle. You can, um, how to say, probably um, part of the, uh, the panel of the driver. So no matter where you install this device, it will be pick up the uh, signal from the satellite. Um, because we don't have the, uh, we don't have, we are not released the software, I mean, cloud-based software for this device uh, yet. So we support the third-party software on this one. So we can, uh, this device can monitor the situation of the vehicle uh, through the OBD2 and also through the uh, J1939. Uh, J1939 is for the uh, vehicle, OBD2 is for the passenger car. Uh, this device will pull the, data from the vehicle and then you can uh, send to the third party software. Um, we have the sensors inside. So it means we can send this container to someone somewhere else. So depending on your customer applications, they can uh, use this kind of data to do more things. For example, uh, check the uh, vehicles, um, check the uh, driver's behaviors um, with this kind of uh, raw data. Now, um, as I just mentioned, we, uh, we are support the third party, uh, third party software. Um, actually, we're using um, multiple protocols to support that. Uh, now we support the Azure IoT hub uh, interface, which is based on the MQTT. And also we, this device supported the WLAN uh, portal, which is based on the TCP. And, and also for in hand, we have an open uh, API, we call it a Flex API. Uh, it means if the third Part of software where they have their own server, like a MQTT server, then our device can just push the uh, all the data to them. Uh, more than pushing data to the server, uh, also the MQTT server can uh, send the config back to this device. So it means uh, the customer can build their own software um, based on this API. If they uh, if customer they have no idea which kind of uh, software they're going to use, so they can uh, use the uh, wireland software, uh, which is already integrated with this hardware. On the, um, <clears throat> on the uh, rock die design part, uh, we have um, one to, uh, wide range for the power supply. Uh, it's from 9 to 48 voltage. Uh, most of all the vehicle is uh, supported this power. So you can just go ahead and install this one to the vehicle. And also on the hardware design, we already um, uh, customized the uh, power circle for, for this one. So you can, you don't, uh, we don't need to worry about the surge from the vehicle. On the uh, temperature range, uh, this one is designed uh, from the minus 20 to 60 degree. Uh, and also when the vehicle is powered off, 
uh, then it's still working with the same temperature uh, with the built-in battery. And also last one is, uh, as I mentioned, is IP67. It means you can install this one out of the vehicle. So it is a fully uh, waterproof. Uh, here, uh, most customers, they may ask about the um, cables. Uh, for in hand, we provide three uh, kinds of cables. Um, one, the first one is uh, the all-in-one test cable. So you see the P2 is a free end. Uh, you can connect the P1 to the vehicle and also P2 connect to anywhere, like your sensor, like your device, and also the power. So you can place this kind of uh, accessories from the PO. And the second one on the uh, right side is uh, with the OBD2 interface. If you specify the, need the OBD2 interface, you can place, uh, place the order with the second cable. The last one is a, <clears throat> is a seven pins uh, cables with the, um, uh, how to say, another OBD2. So this one is for, um, how to say, is for the production uh, because we think for the first one, the test cable, is just for engineer who use it in the uh, office. But with the last one is the piece, the, the one with this uh, three end is for the production. So you can have OBD2 and also you can have the power, you can have the, and you don't have, you don't need the uh, free end. So to avoid the damage. So these three cables are available to order. So now uh, I'd like to uh, reintroduce the VT310 uh, since we uh, have this one uh, at the beginning of this year, but now we have more info about it. Uh, let's go through it again. For the um, VT710, um, it is certified by the PDCRB and uh, CEFCC in Mark. And also now we have the ECER118. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> so, um, because this one is designed for the passenger uh, and also for the um, first responder. So this one is a high end it with the four arch, four arch 45 with a one gigabyte, uh, one gigabyte BPS interface. And also this one offer two uh, band uh, Wi-Fi. You see is a 2.4 gig and also five gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, this one is equipped with the Cortex A7 uh, CPU, which is very powerful. Uh, with this kind of a powerful hardware, uh, indeed we integrate the um, the how to say the Docker and also Python. Uh, I will introduce that one later. Um, it supports the CAN bus. Uh, keep in mind this one only have one CAN bus recently. Uh, we are going to have the second CAN bus with this hardware as well. Uh, this one with a multiple interface. I will introduce later. And also this one is support the, uh, the third party software uh, like a development platform and also support the Azure IoT uh, H hub. Uh, this one is not IP67, it's IP64, uh, which means uh, you cannot install this one uh, out of the vehicle. You must put this one inside or in some cabinet. Uh, here is a look um, of the interface. Um, from right side, you can see we have uh, six antennas. It's a dual antenna for the LTE, uh, <clears throat> dual Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, it, it integrated with the 2G and the 5G, so it's a memo antenna. Beside that, we have a, a GPS and also Bluetooth antenna. Um, one that we have a serial port, uh, which is a uh, for the DB9 is a RS-232 and also on the 20 pin interface, uh, there is a RS-45 interface. Um, and also the power connector is a Molex connector. So you can have your own cable to have a secure connection. Uh, this one supported the USB interface as well. Um, just to clarify, this interface for the USB is only for the uh, troubleshooting so far uh, in other uh, functional for the end user. So you, you cannot connect this USB to your uh, vehicle have the internet connection. Uh, to get the internet connection, uh, connect to the ethernet cable, then it's gone. Uh, and also inside there is a Bluetooth uh, chipset. Um, so you can, uh, we already have the function to read the 
Bluetooth sensor and then submit, uh, send this uh, sensor data to the cloud-based software. And so on the uh, protocol side, this one support the OBD2 and also support the uh, J1939. Uh, according to the customer need, now we have the pipe, uh, another feature is a, a J1708 in the pipeline on this one. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this uh, this device will because this one integrates the edge computing uh, ability, so it will be uh, uh, put data locally, and then the customer can have their own software inside to do the data filtering or do some uh, things by themselves. Like for example, they can uh, capture the picture or video and then do the analysis inside. After that, then they can send the result to somewhere. So we. <coughs> We call this a real-time status monitoring locally, and then uh, we can have, uh, uh, the customer can do the preventive maintenance. Um, we always say uh, this is an open platform because the uh, integrate the uh, Python 3. So far we have some, uh, how say, a demo for the customer to pull the data from uh, additional sensors through the uh, Ethernet port like a motor bus and also the uh, serial port. Um, more than that, this one supports the Docker. Uh, customers can have their own uh, image uh, running on the Docker. Uh, for example, if they run their own software in Linux or Ubuntu, they can have the uh, Ubuntu uh, image running on the Docker. Uh, it's a lightweight um, Linux system uh, over the Docker. Uh, for this kind of Docker, uh, um, Software, so the customer they don't need to uh, how to say develop multiple software from for multiple hardwares, so they just move their current software on the Docker. Uh, if the customer they they don't want to do any program on this device, so they can use our exist uh, interface uh, to put to send data. We call it a Flex API. Uh, for the Flex API, um, it be able to send the data to local device, for example, to the customer device locally, and also send to the, our data to the software through the internet, like MQTT. And also with the internal running software, for example, the customer, they have some software uh, running in the Docker inside, they can use a Flex API to pull the data uh, between the, so between the um, software. Uh, now we uh, we already integrate the soft this device to enhance uh, device device manager portal, which is used to manage this device itself. For example, you can check the data usage, uh, you can check the um, configuration, and also do the firmware upgrade and manage the um, applications, manage the app application from the Python or from Docker. So you can uh, manage all the device is deployed. Um, through one place. And uh, some customers, they how to, uh, how to say, they want to access the device behind this vehicle, uh, which is 710. So we have InConnect uh, portal as well. So uh, indeed the InConnect is a VPN uh, solution. So the customer, they don't need to build their own uh, VPN server. They just need to use the, uh, enable the InConnect service on this device. Then they are be able to access the behind device behind this uh, vehicle gateway. Uh, most of customer, and also most of customer, they want to have the Azure IoT Edge ability. So we uh, integrated the Azure IoT Edge SDK to this hardware. Uh, once the customer, they need this function, they can follow instruction to um, uh, download their software or their uh, account info to this device, then connect to their portal. As I just mentioned, for the, for the uh, Flex API is a for third-party software, no matter is a, it's on the Azure or they are private hardware. So you can set up, set up the Flex API to push data to them. All right, now uh, Bessie is going to introduce the applications of these two uh, devices. Um, yeah, you can go ahead, Bessie. Okay, thank you, Zemin. Thank you for your detailed introduction of our products in the Internet of Vehicles. 
just now I noticed that some of our attendees ask questions, what, do you have some real application for, for your products and why enhance? So that's something I'm gonna talk about now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, as you can see from the picture, we have so many applications of our in-vehicle products like bus, car, um, police car, first responder, fire trucks, and so on. And that's true. Uh, just as Zeming has introduced, our products features, uh, feature so many interfaces and we have IP, APIs that can be connected to many different third-party platforms. And we have GNSS, open platform, edge computing. So that's why we can see that our products are really one size fits most. That means they can be applied in most scenarios, most applications. So next, I will give you a few examples. One of the most common applications of our products, mainly for the VG710 is public transportation. As we all know that those buses, long distance coaches, they offer convenience to our city, to our daily life. But as the internet of things develops and we have more requirements for those applications, we need data to be uploaded in real time and we need traffic security, and we need very accurate positioning and driver behavior monitoring constantly, and some timely report of maybe illegal occupation or uh, maybe driving or something else. So our product in vehicle G710 is perfect for these scenarios, uh, featuring its GNSS, um, its um, interfaces that can be connected to a large range of peripherals on the bus, like cameras, video recorder, and um, many other applications. So in this way, our VG710 can, uh, can collect data from different sources, including data of the routing, video, and traffic, uh, yeah, and the traffic status, driving behavior, and upload this data to the data center of our customers. So we can see everything like traffic, uh, driving behavior, passenger information, temperature, and location. Next example is first responder. First responder like ambulances, they are most in most cases on um, very urgent duty. So timing is very important. Accuracy is very important. They must on the right track and report real-time data to the data center. So our VG710 in this case can be connected to the vehicle controller, moni monitoring terminal, driving recorder, and some mobile office equipment. So in this way, people can just work on the way and keep connected with the data center, with the, their equipment, with their colleagues, and in the data center, the customers can always have access and keep track of the dispatch system, the driving behavior, the routing, and some other information. For logistics, um, this is one typical example of where our product VD310 is used. Logistics um, is very popular in our modern life as they, or, uh, they always carry something that we are expecting, especially in this uh, special time. And so our VT310 can keep, tra keep track of data on those vehicles, including the fuel consumption, engine speed, engine status, the millionage, the oil consumption, and location and speed of the trucks. So, at the center, people will see all the data, including the vehicle access, the operational analysis, how the uh, logistics trucks are doing in their business and the fleet management, because in most cases, there are a lot of vehicles involved and also work plan of logistics trucks. Next is for heavy equipment. We know that heavy equipment always features very, um, a large variety of peripherals 
and there are different parts of the equipment which is very complex and heavy. So our VT3 turn featuring two channel CAN bus. One can be connected to the upper part of the heavy equipment and the other side and the other for the vehicle itself. It can keep track of the drilling location, the pump pressure, work time, fuel consumption, sensor, uh, like uh, for, tempera for temperature and other information on those vehicles and keeps track of location constantly because heavy e equipment usually requires long, long standing hours. So the VT3 turn, which features low power consumption and it's large um, and it's, it's large power battery can sustain for a very long time. And call these services. College services uh, is also something our VT310 can be applied very well because the, the product can, can keep locating those, car, those cars. So those lasers, they can keep, keep track of where the cars are very precisely at any time from anywhere. And they know the, they know the speed of the vehicle, the, uh, the velocity, the fuel consumption, and driving behavior, security alarm can be transmitted to the data center if the owner wants. Well, after all those above applications, here I would like to share with you a real story that just happened not very long ago. Uh, this is um, an application of our VG710 that being used for the bus application, just as what I introduced earlier. Um, this customer, TriNorth, uh, is a system integrator which is based in Sweden. And we got contact with TriNorth very late last year when our product was just released and still in the very early stage of testing and development. Uh, the background is that because TriNorth um, offer solutions for a wide range of vehicles, including buses and cars. And the end user in this case is a very large bus company in a bus operation company in Europe. And they require different data to be, to be collected in their system. For example, their eco driving data, uh, because the company requires uh, very efficient oil consumption and they hope that uh, there can be eco-driving and their echo lock data which records if the if the driver has get drunk and has uh, drunk any alcohol and they want remote control and monitoring of the heating system because we know that it's very cold in the North Europe. And they also requested connectivity to the central platform because they wanted to be updated about everything that is happening in the buses. And they want also the passenger information. So at that time, Trinos came to us and asked, hey, what, what product or solution do you have? And can you solve those problems and meet the requirements of our end user customer? So at that time, the product VG710 was just released. We just uh, deliver, we just uh, proposed this solution. And um, so Trinos just uh, took it and they did some tests. Also in this, uh, during this time, we had a very good communication uh, in product testing and development, a customized, uh, some uh, customizing work. And it turned out that everything went very well. Here is the brief introduction of uh, what the, what the, what the solution is. We know that on their, uh, on their buses, there are so many peripherals, including a monitor, a control unit, which can tell the customer the status of the bus. And there is a driver awareness panel, which can record the eco-driving data, the speed, the oil consumption, and some other data of the bus. And there is also a passenger counter which can count how many passengers are on the bus. With our in-vehicle G710, 
all those peripherals are connected to our product and data from different sources are collected and then transmitted to their platform. So the end user customer from Trinos platform can view the driving behavior, the alcohol lot data, the speed, eco driving status, bus stop information, engine status, and passenger information, nearly everything from their platform. And this is all be, uh, these are all be uh, transmitted by our VG710. So in this way, we can see that we really perfectly met their requirements and solve the problem. And here also, uh, we are very grateful that Trinos had trusted us and they gave us such a opportunity to test our product, which at that time was at a very early stage. And we really did a lot of tests, a lot of work, and it turned out very well. And also this, this is some feedback from their CEO, Peter. Uh, he mentioned that um, they are very careful with the choice of their partners and system components and in hand, and their VG710 fitting very well as an easy choice for them. So also we, we will say thanks to our customers. Thank you for your trust, your understanding and your collaboration in this project. Okay, after the introduction of all the applications, cases and success stories, uh, here we are coming to the nearly end of the webinar today, we will have a selection guide, a brief summary of our two products. So here you can see a comparison of the VG710 and VT310. You can see the difference for uh, the LTE cellular type. VG710 is, is faster than the VT310. Uh, one is for CAT6 and the other CAT4, CAT1, and CATM. The, VG3, uh, the VG710 features dual SIM and more interfaces, also Bluetooth, and it has GNSS and inertial navigation. And for serial port, it offers RS232 uh, and uh, RS485. It has Wi-Fi VPN and diagnostics. Uh, we can say that VG710 is more like a uh, router which also, also has some uh, has some features of our edge computing gateway because it supports edge computing and docker for further development but for vt310 it's more like an asset tracker which is simple um, more cost effective but it also uh, more power saving and more enduring so after that, some of our customers may want to know uh, what do we have in the future because we are at the near end of this year. So what are our plans, our roadmaps for next year? So here you can see also a very brief overview. Now we have the VG710 and uh, in next year, we will further, we will continue to develop this product. We will have more higher, version, a higher end version of VG710, which uh, is more advanced and that can be applied in more scenarios. For example, in, uh, in next year, we will have products that can support 5G and LTE CAT12. Also, we will dig deeper in different vertical market segments like code chain and video telematics. And for the asset tracker, Apart from the VT310, uh, our, new our new product, we will also continue to develop more cost-effective, simpler one, the VT210 OBD2 tracker, which features very compact size and very cost-effective uh, solution, uh, which can be used for location tracking, oil consumption tracking, and can be very useful for um, car owners, uh, fleet, uh, maybe owners of several cars. You can keep track of the location and status of your car very easily. Also, we will continue to support Flex API and continue for to offer our customers API, um, solutions uh, which 
they can connect to other third party platforms. Okay, uh, I think that's my part. Here we are coming to the Q&A session. You can raise your questions. Uh, while we're waiting for the uh, questions, I see there are multiple questions. Uh, I already answered some of them. So I'd like to share this question and answer to all of you. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> let me get this one. So first about the uh, power consumption of the uh, VT310 uh, in what? Uh, indeed, there are two work mode. Uh, one is the uh, work mode, another one is the standby mode. Uh, usually we uh, talk about the uh, standby mode uh, and uh, which is a very low power consumption uh, because it's built in the battery. So we don't say how many watt because sometimes it work uh, as a standby and sometimes it work as a uh, work mode. So we say, hey, for this kind of uh, in uh, battery, it can work how many days? Uh, so far with our test um, data, it can work like one week. So we, this data is still uh, in testing because we are still improving our software to make it work longer. So far we have be able to have it work in one week. And uh, in, a, in a work uh, mode, which means the vehicle is powered on, uh, the power consumption, uh, consumption is not important, but uh, whatever. So the power consumption for this one is uh, uh, less than one watt, which is a uh, uh, point seventy seven watt. Uh, also, the second question: a customer asked for uh, the antenna uh, for the VT three ten uh, has a built in antenna, uh, and also how we recommend to install it. Uh, yes, all the antenna of the VT three ten is built in, including the cellular, uh, Bluetooth, and also the GNSS antenna are built in. Um, to install this hardware, uh, usually we recommend customer install it in the uh, driver's panel, close to the drive panel or in the uh, toolbox. Because on that region, there is no uh, metal cover to block the signal. When the signal including the GNS and also the um, LTE. But uh, we test this one, you can install this one inside of the vehicle, no matter is uh, under the seat or whatever, it will be able to pick up the signal from the GSS. And then next one. Oh, can, can G710 support the motor bus? Um, yes or no? <laughs> so yes, <is> that <clears throat> uh, because this one built the Python, so customer, they can easily map the uh, IOs to motor bus address. But with the original software, which is a uh, uh, come from a factory, it doesn't support this feature. So it means customer, they can uh, write a simple Python script to map it. Uh, you can map this um, IOs to Modbus and also you can map them to your own protocol uh, and also another standard protocol like a, a 101 or DMP3 or whatever. So you can map it. Uh, the last te technical question is about the subscription. To uh, If the customer needs a subscription to receive the location of the vehicle, um, for enhanced site, uh, we, uh, we don't offer the fleet management software. So there's no subscription from in hand to receive this kind of a location info. Uh, but uh, to get this info, you have uh, the customer have two options. First one, uh, the customer can, um, how to say, uh, have their own software. So they can build their own software uh, to receive data. So in hand, the device can send data to them without any cost. Or they don't want if they don't want to build their own portal, then they can use the exist um, partner from in hand. So far, we are working with a uh, Wayland portal, so you can contact them or you can contact us to introduce Wayland to you. So then, you if you use their software, yes, uh, the customer needs a subscription. And also, yeah, this is the answer to the question. Yeah, so Betsy, you go ahead uh, for the rest of the open questions. Um, okay, uh, I saw, uh, I noticed that some customers ask uh, what are the status, what are the development status of our product VG710 and how it is doing. I can see that, um, I can see that the product VG710 is 
of was officially launched in March 2020 this year. So um, not very long time, but up to now we have more than 50 projects worldwide. So it means that that's a really good achievement of our product and it is enjoying very good momentum. Yeah, and how about the VT310? Uh, the VT310 is almost done with the development and the product will be available in about three weeks. All right, there is another question about the um, open protocol. Uh, yes, uh, for in hand, we offer the Flex API. This is, a, we already published this um, document on website. So if the customer, they want to integrate with the uh, third uh, software uh, provider. So yes, we can do, use this one to have it. And uh, even if uh, this kind of software doesn't work with the third party software, uh, for in hand, we are willing to um, to have a customer uh, protocol to integrate with the, the existing software provider. Uh, for example, for the uh, some of customers, they say, "Hey, I use the Rust Track software, uh, but they don't support the MQT. They don't support the uh, Flex API. Can in hand to develop something to integrate with them?" Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we are willing to uh, integrate this kind of software. So just contact ourselves to see what kind of um, protocol the customer have, then we can integrate with our hardware. All right, I think this one is done. Um, all right, uh, the other question is that, what is the management software to have location visibly of multiple vehicles and what is the maximum number of device supported? Um, from in hand side, uh, currently we don't offer the fleet management software. Uh, so uh, there's no any uh, function we have for this software. But for in hand, we have a basic software we call it a device manager. So you can use device manager to match the hardware itself. Uh, with the device manager, you can see the location, uh, but this is only for location info, not for tracker info. Uh, if you are asking for the fleet, uh, let's say you have 100 vehicles, you want to manage it, all of them, then you need to go with the third uh, party software like uh, uh, we just mentioned, like a uh, uh, rest track or VLAN uh, software. Uh, for the limit of that can number for the devices, I don't think there are any limit. At least they can support uh, like a thousand devices with one account. So because they are the uh, exist software, they already have this business for many years. So no limit, 1,000, 10,000, I think is fine. Then the last question, uh, what, is the, what, what are the EMF, EMI and the vibration certifications are these device hold? Um, so on the, this is two, uh, I mean, this question is for two part. Uh, first one is for the uh, 310 and another one is for the VG, uh, which is three, uh, which is 710, sorry. Uh, for the 310, uh, the ESD is the um, level level three, which is 4K, uh, 4K volt for the ESD. Um, usually we say uh, the level two, level three or level four, okay? For the VT310 is a level three. And also for the VG710, uh, give me a second, let me check. Yeah, okay, uh, with our spec, we didn't mention the uh, level of the VG710. Um, how about this? Uh, we can um, keep this question, then we can come back to you uh, by email, say what kind of uh, um, EMF and EMI uh, certification we have. So I see all the questions that answered. Uh, is there any uh, question we missed? 
Bessie, yeah, no more question. Yeah, Bessie, mm -hmm. you go ahead. No, no, I think we have answered nearly all the questions. Perfect. Oh, I should leave our contact information for you guys. Um, if you have any questions or any requirements, any projects, uh, please always welcome to email europesales at internetworks.com. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for taking time off your very busy schedule. Thank you for attending our webinar and we will see you next year. And early happy holidays to all of you. All right, thank you uh, as always. Yeah, thank you, bye. Bye. Have a good day.